In this video, I will be using a technique that I wanted to try for a long time, combining gouache with oil pastels. I will be channeling my inner Claude Monet and painting a lily pond. For this painting, I will be using Bristol paper. It's just thick, sturdy paper. Smooth surface is good for gouache painting, unlike watercolor gouache doesn't require any texture. I am going to tape it down so I get nice clean margins and also to hold my paper in place. And I will also pin it on the corners just for additional security. Okay, my paper is ready to start painting. I am using Grey Matters disposable palette. I really like it because I can throw it away after I'm done painting. I don't have to clean anything. Gouache that I'm using is M. Graham's Artist Gouache. I will need, of course, some white. I always try to remember to squeeze out two daubs of white so I can mix one with warm colors and one with cool colors. That way I can get cleaner mixture without too much mud, hopefully. So the colors I'm squeezing out are Lizard and Crimson and also a couple of yellows. This is Camboge and Hansa Yellow. I will also need some blues. I have a lot of green. I don't want to use green out of the tube and I actually don't have it. So I'm going to use a couple of blues. One is Ptalocyanine Blue. It's a primary. And the other one is Cobalt Blue. The pink that I will mix from white and alizarin crimson will of course not be as bright as the flowers in the reference photo. I would need something like opera pink for that and I don't have that pigment but copying the photo is not the point. I'm just using it for inspiration so I will paint with the color palette that I have. I'm not going to draw anything on paper. I'll just draw with my brush. So let's distribute the flowers with that light pink just kind of figure out the composition so i'll have one here there will be a bud and there will be that seed box here on top and i think i need another bud because as we know from experience odd number of important objects on paper always look better than an even number okay let's draw the leaves also drawing with a brush and kind of roughly filling in the shape with my green mixture so my first step would be to paint large shapes as usual with any type of painting with watercolor gouache oils acrylics whatever medium you use the principles the rules remain the same we need to work for, from large forms to smaller forms so i'm trying to first distribute all my objects on paper before i go into details and subtle variations of color all that fun stuff the reason I wanted to combine gouache with oil pastels is that they both have very saturated colors. They have rich creamy texture, but oil pastels have more texture than gouache. Gouache is kind of matte. It's an opaque medium. So creating texture with it, you kind of have to do certain things. Usually application is smooth and flat. But oil pastels can create texture very easily and also oil pastels are little sticks so it will be much easier for me to paint smaller details like veins on the leaves of those water lilies, stems, texture on the flowers. I'm thinking it should be much easier to do with oil pastels than trying to do it with a tiny brush with gouache. You will see the finished painting at the end of the video in you'll be able to decide for yourself if that experiment was successful or not. If these two materials work well together or they should be kept apart, so to say. I distributed my leaves and flowers more or less and now I am going to start painting the dark shapes of the water in between my main characters of this painting. I'm using half an inch 
flat brush it's a very inexpensive synthetic brush but it works great both for gouache and watercolor gouache i'm using is artist gouache so it has gamma arabic as binder and it's water soluble and water rewettable so it's not a problem to use watercolor brushes for this type of paint and if you want to know more about types of gouache that exist on the market i have a video an episode of my video vlog where i shop for gouache and i also talk about different options that we as artists can choose from and artist gouache is one of those options okay my dark shapes are masked in kind of first pass let's move on to middle tone i am going to paint these leaves and the beauty of gouache that you can work with broad brush strokes and make changes as many times as you like and it all only going to look better and better the more layers you apply unlike watercolor that requires preliminary planning and very precise paint application and knowing what you're trying to achieve right from the start with gouache we can play around and try different things you see i'm mixing colors as i go trying to vary those shades of green adding more blue in some areas for shadows or more yellow where there is sunlight on the leaves painting with gouache is kind of my vacation from the precision of watercolor I'm starting to add a little bit of texture to the leaves working with the edge of the brush those flat brushes are pretty versatile because you can work with the wider side with the flat side and also with the edge for final lines and some details like adding veins on the leaves so trying to fill in those sh large shapes still large areas where the leaves are going to be and I'm working around the flowers no reason to cover those areas with green paint but if I need to correct edges later I will be able to do that very easily with gouache so that's why we paint it from dark to light because we need to establish darkest areas dark gouache lightens so there is a limit to how dark I can go with it lighter areas and highlights are very easy to add because we have white paint branch in the back there I'll do something with that just want to mark it so I don't forget I have to mention that first application of gouache never really looks very good at least I can make it look very good it seems like at least a couple of layers is required and also some color variation is required because some of those areas look really flat they don't have any depth I don't know why that happens you have to build up at least a couple layers of paint and some color variation for the elements of the painting to look right so even on the areas where I already applied some paint I like to go over again maybe with a smaller brush and with slightly different colors and give them some texture and some details And I was trying to leave the stems for some reason but I really don't need to leave them because I'm going to paint them on top with my oil pastels hopefully that will work I've never tried this technique like I said it's an experiment for me I wanted to try it for a long time because I think it will look really kind of I see it in my mind I picture it in my mind and I think it's going to look good but we will have to see how this painting turns out The size of paper I'm using is 11 by 14. Since I have to cover the whole sheet with little brush strokes, I usually try not to use huge format. I paint watercolor much larger, but I think gouache is more of an intimate size. 
I think that's just the nature of this medium. It looks better on smaller sizes and it's also much more feasible to finish the painting in just one go. The leaves are pretty much done. I am going to wash my brush really well, get out all that green pigment out of my brushes because I'm going to move on to painting the flowers themselves. And I'm going to paint the general form of the flower. Another beautiful thing about gouache that you don't really have to wait very long for it to dry. It dries almost instantaneously, unlike watercolor, <laughs> where you have to wait for quite a while for each layer to dry. With gouache you can move forward at a pretty swift pace and start painting on top of what you already painted. Like I said, my pinks don't match exactly. I don't have that bright pink, but I think alizarin crimson works pretty well with the other colors that I selected. The only thing I'll have to find something in the set of my oil pastels because I want to paint the details on the flowers with oil pastels. Hopefully my set will have some colors that will go well with the current color palette that I have on paper. When you work with a set, like a set of watercolor pencils or pastels. Sometimes you just don't have the exact shade that you need, but there are always ways around it. some pure alizarin crimson on the tips of the flowers because they have some variation in color there. Add a little more color to that pod and to the buds. That petal, I think it needs to overlap the leaf because they were kind of biting each against each other. That's not very good composition. And I think I need to separate the petals on the leaves with a little color. It never looks good when your flower is all bunched up together because petals almost never are like one blob, you know, there will be some that are separate or at least we need to separate them because it will look better. So I'm going to bring the background into those flowers a little bit to make them look more natural. This bud on the left that I decided to add, I'm looking at the other one, trying to figure out what it's going to look like. So the stems will be here somewhere and then I'll add some oil pastels to them later. Just mark them lightly so I don't forget where I wanted them to be. And there will be one here. And that's that stick or a branch or something that's in the back gives me some visual interest that's always good maybe a few stems in the back will be good as well i tried to paint them with a large brush but they kind of disappeared okay i think that's it i'll leave this for just a couple of minutes i'm going to go get my oil pastels to put finishing touches on my painting I got this set in an art supply store just recently. It's Pentel Arts, a 25 color set. It was super inexpensive. I think it was like 350 or something like that. You see, I haven't even opened it yet. So let's open it and see if we can find some colors that will work with the gouache painting that I already did. I just want to add a few details to the flowers, to the stems, maybe to the leaves, I don't know. We will see how the painting develops. Let me test at least one color. These oil pastels are very nice saturated colors. They're sufficiently soft. If you ever tried oil pastels, you might know that they come in different softness depending on the manufacturer. And in my opinion, the ones that are firmer are harder to use. So I really like soft ones. 
So let's add some of those yellow undertones at the base of the flower that I see. Also maybe light green and I need something for the stem. Maybe this brown color. I don't know. I'll think about it. Pastels don't have that bright pink, of course, when I need it, they don't have it, but they do have a scarlet red and this will be good to combine with my flowers. So I am going to add just a few details, a few veins on the petals for visual interest. Some yellow at the base of these petals as well. Let's work on this flower, give it a little more definition with my red. Try not to go like all over the perimeter and apply that color everywhere. Really need to be careful and just add a few accents where they're needed. White is sufficiently transparent when it goes over gouache just to lighten what I have on paper already. That's an interesting way to use oil pastels to lighten certain areas of gouache. deep green. This will be actually good for the stems. Let's accentuate the stems. I kind of just mark them really quick so I can give them a little more definition, a little more definition to the buds. Let's do this one with lighter green. And this seed pod is too dark so I can lighten it with pink as well. Maybe a little orange. I see some orange there. That will be good. Let's drop it in the flowers as well. I don't want to use a certain color in just one spot. That will look weird. So we need to distribute it in a few places. It'll be good on the bud as well. So even though this is a really inexpensive 25 color set, I think it's pretty versatile. I like the selection of colors that it has and it basically gives me everything I need to finish this painting. I like that those deeper accents that I'm adding, I think they really enhance the painting. So I would say this was a successful experiment, but please let me know in comments what you think. If you think this is a good technique, if you like the painting, here's the final result. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in another one here on Tamarab Studios channel. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!